Pandas AI combines the power of pandas with generative AI so that you can do data analysis without writing any code. What does this mean for people who work with data and just how good is pandas AI? That's what I want to find out. So I've put it to the test using the latest UK housing data. And if that doesn't get you going, I don't know what's wrong with you. So I'll show you how to set it up and then how to use it. And then we'll see just how good it is and what it means for anyone that works with data. It's fairly easy to install using pip but you have to give yet more money to OpenAI to access their API. But hey, I'm a YouTuber, money means nothing to me. Now let me show you what the data looks like. Each row is a data point for a region of the UK at a specific time. It contains price information for different property types. Okay, so now things are getting serious. I wanna show you how this works. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, this is a really important line, this next one. We're gonna create the pandas AI object. So we'll just do this and we'll pass it the LLM, which I've created uh, using the OpenAI key. Okay, so we'll run that. So now we've got our Pandas AI object. This is gonna do all the work. So if we look at this data, here in the region name column, we've got a lot of different regions. I want to see a list of all those regions. So let's just see if it can handle that. A nice easy one to start with. So we take our object, Pandas AI, and we pass in that data frame. And then this is where we prompt. So we have to prompt somewhere. And uh, this is, we can't just prompt anywhere. We have to do it as an argument in this uh, pandas AI object. So let's just put list all of the region names in the UK. So let's run that and see what happens. It generates the code here. We get some code and it's done it correctly. So dot unique dot to list. So if we go down here, you can see now that we have a list of all of the region names. So that has worked. Let's see if it can do a plot. So if we do pandas AI, plot the average prices in each of the last 10 years, we have a plot but it's not from the last 10 years, it's Kensington and Chelsea, which is the most expensive area. It says from 2013 to 2022, but it's plotted from 1995. So I guess this is the whole uh, data set here. So we've got almost what we want. And if we tweak the prompt, I bet we could get exactly what we want. It could also handle missing data and summary statistics. But I want you to give it a bigger challenge. So I asked it to predict the average detached price house in the UK for next year. Now this is pandas AI, remember? So you might expect it just to use pandas. But to do this, it imported scikit-learn and used a scikit-learn linear model. You never know what you're going to get. And it gave me a prediction for the average house price in the UK. Now, let me tell you about Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is a STEM learning platform that just excels at interactive hands-on learning. It's actually so good that a lot of the big tech companies recommend it to sharpen up your maths and stats in preparation for data science interviews. Brilliant isn't just about absorbing information. It's about applying that knowledge and crucially solving problems and developing your logical thinking skills. I've used Brilliant for years and I still turn to Brilliant to broaden my knowledge in various STEM fields and to keep my mind sharp. Brilliant offers thousands of lessons from time-tested subjects like math and Python to cutting edge topics like neural networks and quantum computing. To get started for free for a full 30 days and join the millions of other people using Brilliant, go to brilliant.org forward slash Python programmer or just click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you to use that link will get 20% off Brilliant's annual subscription. Integrating a large language model into Pandas is an interesting development and the code that it writes is useful. It does what you want it to. But what does it mean for the future? It, you know, this is an early iteration of Pandas AI. It's only likely to improve. For now, I think it's a really useful assistant, especially if you can't be bothered to read the documentation, it's probably gonna be able to do most of the things that you want it to do. So it'll save you a lot of time. And also I think it will teach you if you don't know how to do something and you ask the language model how to do it, or you do it in Pandas AI, you'll be able to see the code that's written and you can work through that code as well. Short term, I think it's really beneficial. Long term, there's no doubt that this is going to disrupt. The question is, how is it gonna disrupt and what's the outcome of that disruption going to be?